Welcome to another KubeCon presentation, this time about my favorite project, Argo Rollouts, and how you do laser-focused deployments. So my name is Kostis. I'm working as a developer advocate at uh, CodeFresh, now Octopus Deploy. I'm also part of the Argo team, focusing mainly on Argo CD and Argo Rollouts. Uh, CodeFresh is an enterprise solution on top of all the four Argo projects. Um, we also offer a hardened security distribution of Argo CD, and we are the creators of the first ever GitOps uh, certification. This presentation is not about CodeFresh, but if this is interesting to you, we have a booth uh, outside and you can come and talk to us. So today we are going to talk about Argo rollouts. We are going to see how you can do laser-focused uh, deployments. I'm actually going to show you two methods, the easy but not very flexible, and the hard but flexible, as it usually goes. And then the CNCF sent an email to all um, speakers and said, if you have a demo, do a recording because the Wi-Fi sucks. So I followed their advice and we have not just one, but two live demos without any recording. So hopefully this will work. So just to start with the basics, we are going to talk about progressive delivery. And progressive delivery in the context of Argo rollouts means blue-green and canary deployments. So for blue-green, you have your version running, it's live, users are looking at it. Then you start a new instance of the application, the next version, it doesn't get any traffic. So this is your chance to do some unit tests, some integration tests, some smoke tests. Then you're confident and you say, okay, this looks correct. And you switch the traffic. And after a while, you completely discard the old version. So this is blue-green. And for Canaris, it's the same thing, but instead of having a single point of time where you do the traffic switch, you gradually send more traffic to the new version. So you start with 10%, then 20%, 30%, and so on. If, and if something goes wrong at any point, you can roll back. So why do we need this? Because if you are familiar with how Kubernetes works, out of the box, Kubernetes only offers um, rolling deployments, where you lose one pod and you gain another pod from the new version. And this is not something you have direct control on. You cannot you know, stop the process and do something else. And there is also the recreate strategy, which I'm not going to talk about it because it has downtime. And we don't want downtime at all. So how do we do Canaris? We use Argo rollouts, which is one of the four uh, Argo projects. One important thing to know is that it's completely self-contained. It works on its own. You don't need Argo CD to run it. And if you get Argo rollout, you get access to a new custom resource, which is the rollout, and it defines how you do um, progressive delivery, both blue-green and Canaris. There is also a UI that you can use, and there is also the capability to do this smoke test to understand if the deployment is successful or not. So this is the UI. I have started the Canary. You can see on the left, I'm sending 20% of the traffic to the new version, and then I said stop. So this is my chance to do some checks and make a decision whether I want to continue or not. And at the bottom, you can see the pods of the new version and the old version, and you can understand what is going on. So rollout gives you access to this rollout resource, which is exactly the same as a standard deployment. It has the exact same fields as the deployment resource of Kubernetes. But there is an extra field for your strategy where you define how the progressive delivery process uh, works. In this example, I'm saying I want a canary, and I'm going to start with 10% of the traffic to the new version, and then I will stop for one hour, and then I will continue, and so on, and so on. So if you get Argo rollouts, now we have progressive delivery with Kubernetes. Behind the scenes, it works with replica sets. So in the case of BlueGreen, you have a new replica set that is the new version, and it doesn't get any traffic. You do your checks, and then at some point, you switch to that replica set, and then once you're confident, you destroy the old replica set, and Canaris is similar. You just use um, different percentages for traffic. Now, one major decision that you have to make once you adopt Argo rollouts is if you want to use a traffic manager or not. If you don't use a traffic manager, you can get a Canary, but the percentages only work with the number of pods. So if you want to send 10% of traffic to the new version, you need to launch the number of pods, uh, a new number of pods, which match 10% to the number of old pods. Uh, maybe this works for you, maybe it doesn't. If you get a traffic manager, you don't have these limitations. The number of pods now doesn't correlate with the uh, percentage, so you can do whatever you want and send as much traffic as you want to as many new pods uh, as you want. Linkerd is just an example. It doesn't have to be 
uh, Linkerd. There are several traffic managers supported out of the box. And there is also support for the new gateway API, which is the new uh, specification from Kubernetes. And it's, let's say, the next generation of uh, Ingress. So even if your traffic manager is not one of those supported out of the box, maybe it supports uh, the gateway API. Uh, so the whole point is that we want to automate everything. We want to automate not just the deployment, but also the rollbacks. So we want to start the deployment process and then instruct algo rollouts to look at our metrics and make a decision if the deployment is successful or not. We don't want to have a human there. So you also need to have metrics to effectively use uh, algo rollouts, and algo rollouts can monitor those metrics and make the decision. Uh, there are several other features, and I don't have you know to talk about all of them today. Uh, there is also a CLI, there are metrics for the controller itself. Uh, I'm going to focus on the second bullet point, header-based routing, and why this is an important feature. But you should spend some time, you know, to look at algo rollouts and see what other uh, capabilities it has. Okay, so now we know the basics, and let's say algo rollouts is the best thing ever, and you're going to adopt it in your company, and you read the documentation, and if you look at the documentation, everything is super simple. You have a single Kubernetes service, that is the old version, the new version, you send some traffic and you say, yeah, that's simple. But in reality, things are not like this. You don't have a single service. You have many services that cooperate, especially if you work in a company that has adopted microservices. So here I have an example of an application. Let's say it's a, an eShop, and there are the services responsible for the public access where everybody can log in and buy stuff. Then I also have my internal users, which from the internet can do some stuff in the application. And then I also have some partners. And they are using a different subset of all the services. And I choose to do a Canary deployment on the auth service, which is right in the middle, and is used by everybody, because we're going to work with the simplest scenario possible. So if we do that, we have a huge blast radius, because this auth service is used by everybody. So yes, I can start, you know, a canary process, and if something goes wrong, yes, I will roll back. But in those five minutes that something goes wrong, everybody will be affected. Public, internet users, and partners. And maybe this is not something I want. Maybe I want to decide my own risk according to the users and according to their uh, acceptances. So I want to do something different. The other problem that you have with Argo rollout is that out of the box, if you uh, start a canary, Algo rollout is not very smart. It will do a percentage according to requests. So it will get some requests and it will say, okay, this request, I'm going to send this to the old version and this request, I'm going to send to the new version. So if you have an individual user using the application and that user starts five requests, maybe some of these requests will go to the new version, some will go to the old version, and this is for the single user. So maybe your application doesn't even support this because you know the user might log in, they will see a green button because that UI screen went to the new version, and then after some time, this button will become red because it went to the other version. So this is something that normally we don't want. Usually applications don't work like this. Instead, what we prefer is to make Argo rollouts a bit smarter and understand users. So we want to have a set of users, and when we say we want 30% of the traffic to go to the, new, uh, to the new version, usually we mean 30% of users should go to the new version. So if you select a single user, either it will go to the old version, so all the requests will go to the old version, or all the requests will go to the new version. So the experience of each user individually will not be affected by the canary. So this is what we want to do. And even if you look, you know, how companies apply canaries in practice, this is almost always what business wants. So nobody, you know, really says just select a random 30% and use the new version. They say, we are deploying to Europe, let's start with France. We are deploying globally, let's start uh, with the US. We are deploying internally, let's start with our internal users. So there is some kind of grouping on who would like to see the canary first. It's not completely random. So if you adopt Argo rollouts and just read the documentation, what you get out of the box is good but not enough. Yes, you get a nice way you know, to define canaries and blue-green deployments, and a nice way to integrate with traffic managers, but everything else is not supported. Like as I said, you have a huge blast radius, so everybody will be affected if something goes wrong. Uh, the percentages for canaries are request-based and not user-based, and you want user-based. And also, you have problems that you don't really control, you know, who will see the canary or not. 
So some people adopt Argo rollouts and they are instantly, you know, disappointed with the capabilities they get out of the box. So can we do better? Yes, we can, but first, an intermission. Let's talk about my second favorite project, the Gateway API. So the Gateway API is completely unrelated to Argo rollouts. It's a new specification from Kubernetes. Uh, essentially, it tries to fix the mistakes of the ingress control, of the ingress specification, or expand the ingress specification to cover cases that right now they are not covered by ingress and you need to go to a specific traffic provider. Uh, so this standard is implemented by a lot of pro pro providers, and specifically for Argo rollouts, we are interested in the HTTP route object, which defines how you uh, connect to a Kubernetes service. So as I said, Argo rollout supports the gateway API, and this means that right now, you get out of the box support for several tra traffic providers, which also implement the API. So maybe you need you know, to press your traffic provider and ask for gateway API support, because if they do that, you will unlock the capability to use Argo rollouts with your favorite uh, traffic provider. And I'm saying this because you know it's the chicken and egg situation. People want to use a traffic provider, but there isn't gateway API support, so you need to ask the provider to add gateway support so that you can use it. So let's see, uh, back to the main topic, two methods to improve our situation. So initially, I want to make a choice and say I will, I will control the risk for users because some users don't want to have problems with the canary. Maybe they don't want to see the canary at all. So in my case, I will make a selection and say I have some VIP users and I don't want them to be affected at all, even if a canary is happening. Then I have normal users and I pass them in the canary. And then I have, let's say, the bleeding edge users, and I want all of them to see the canary as soon as possible. So in this case, I can do a um, slicing of my network, and instead of connecting everybody to the same URL or the same path, I will define different URLs or different paths for these customers, and I will make sure that each URL has a different behavior according to the canary. So in the example I was talking before, instead of sending everybody to the auth service, I will send my partners to auth service slash table, the general public to auth service slash preview, and the, uh, sorry, slash um, canary, and my internet to slash preview. And this path based you know, writing is just an example. You can also do hosts or you can do a combination, whatever you prefer. This is just for the, the demo. So the end result is right now, if you look at how the canary is progressing, Blue is the old version, green is the new version. Users that go as last canary look at the canary normally. You know, traffic starts to the old version and then gradually goes to the new version. Users that are unstable, they always see the previous version, so they are ne never affected by anything. And at the end, when I'm fully confident that the canary has you know, finished and there are some issues, then they all switch instantly to the new version. And then my internal users, which I have decided and said, I want them to see the new version as soon as possible. As soon as the canary start, they see the new version right away. So this is the choice I made you know, to present a different risk according to the, um, the user type. So this is what I had before. This is a huge blast radius where everybody is affected by my canary. And now I've changed things because I control how risk goes. So partners no longer see the canary at all. So they are not affected by anything. Uh, I have moved the, the blast radius to the internet users because they will see the canary as soon as it starts. So if there is a problem, they will be affected right away. And then for the general public, you know, they are affected because they look at the canary, but because they go gradually, the blast radius is not as big um, as previously. So how does it work in practice? Uh, it's really simple. You still have the basic HTTP route. Remember, we are using the gateway API that defines the canary. So this is what the normal public looks. But I have also defined two additional routes. And each one goes always to the stable or always to the uh, new version. So instead of having one route, as you normally have with the canary, now we have three. So live demo. I have this exact uh, example here. So this is my application. It's a very simple application where each box makes a request every uh, three seconds. And this is my uh, public instance, what normal users see. And first of all, you can see that right now I have a canary uh, in progress. If we go look also on the terminal, it's like this. 
I've started the canary. This is the rollout uh, CLI. You can see at the bottom with yellow the new uh, pods and with green the old pods. And right now it's stopped and 30% of the traffic goes to the new version. So this is what you get out of the box uh, with Argo rollouts. And you can instantly see, first of all, this 30% like usually 30% of the boxes are um, yellow, but also you can see the complete randomness. So a box you know, sends a request and it hits version 1.0, then the same box sends another request and randomly it goes to the new version, which as I said is not what nor we normally want. So if you see I've made this decision and this is accessible at slash canary, so I say the general public should go at slash canary, but I also have another endpoint which I use for my partners, and this goes to slash stable. So even though a canary is running right now, my partners always connect to version 1.0, so nothing will happen to them if you know 2.0 has an issue. And then I also have my intranet, which is my own users, and I send all of them to the new version because I want you know, to detect uh, problems as soon as pops possible. So even though a canary right now is in progress, I have three different kinds of users, and they see different things according to what I um, want to with uh, you know, the risk. So that's one method. Is it perfect? Uh, no, it's not perfect. We have gained some control of you know, the risk. We can make some uh, changes and decide who is going to see the canary or not. Uh, but we need to set up this in advance, like we need to make a decision in advance, decide who are the users, go into the respective applications and use the respective URL. And this doesn't change, like as soon as the canary starts, everybody sees what they are supposed to see. I cannot change things uh, in the middle. I also haven't solved my problem yet regarding requests. So people that see the canary, they still have a random number of requests that go to the new version, and we don't have this with uh, users. So it's better but it's still, you know, not perfect. But it's super easy to set up. You just saw I just created two new routes. So can we do better? And of course, um, we can. So normally, what you get out of the box is that, you know, remember the traffic provider randomly sends uh, some requests to the new um, version. But we also have the capability to use headers. So here, Argo Rollouts has support and says, instead of blindly, blindly sending um, a request to the new version, it will make a choice and it will look for an HTTP header. And only if this HTTP header exists and has a specific value, then it will make the decision to send that version to the canary. So here I've made a simple example where I'm saying X canary uh, equals true. And I will set up Argo Rollouts to only send requests to the new version if this header um, is on the request. So if I have this basic building block, now I have the capability to define canaries for users. So I can select my application and make it a bit smarter and say for this user, the HTTP header will be there. So this user will have all the requests from his application to the new version, while that user doesn't have that HTTP header, so all the requests from that user will go to the uh, old application. So I made the change where it's not any anymore request based, it's user based, uh, the selection of how new version versus old version works. And the nice thing about HTTP headers is that they are fully dynamic. I can change them on the fly. So first of all, there are you know several networking components that allow you to change headers. You can monitor headers, inject headers, modify uh, headers. This is one of the popular capabilities of also uh, service messages or uh, gateway API, oh, sorry, or gateway products um, or load balancers. And it's not static anymore. Even while a canary is running, I can go and change the header and uh, do stuff. So HTTP headers give me many more capabilities, not only in regards to the request versus uh, user selection, but also that I don't have to decide things in advance. I can change my mind even in the middle of a canary. So how I do this, uh, Argo Rollouts has the capability where you define your rollout and in a step of a canary, you essentially say, look, instead of just selecting a random percentage of requests and sending them to the new version, you will only send them if uh, this X canary header exists and if the value is uh, yes. And that's it, okay? That's the only thing I need to change. Uh, but as always, there is a limitation. You need to check 
if your traffic provider supports this as well. So Argo rollout supports header-based routing, but this only works if your traffic provider supports header-based routing. And this comes back to the discussion about the Gateway API, that before the introduction of the Gateway API, uh, the only networking provider that supported this was Istio. So if you wanted to do this with Argo rollout, you had to choose Istio. That was the only implementation. Now, with the Gateway API, it doesn't really matter if you use Istio or not. It only matters if your traffic provider supports uh, header-based routing. The demo that you're going to see next is using uh, traffic version 3.0, and it supports the Gateway API plus uh, header-based routing. So this is why I'm saying it's a bit more complex to set up. Uh, but hopefully, you know, as time progresses and traffic managers support the Gateway API, this, is also be, this will also be much simpler uh, to implement. So check your traffic uh, provider. So the second demo. Uh, so here I have my other rollout, and I have this exact same thing. In the steps, I'm saying you're going to send 20% of the traffic to the new version, but only if this Canary uh, header exists and it has the value as yes. So now, instead of having uh, three different, let's say, URLs, I have a single URL. So you see at the top, the URL is just localhost. There isn't a path anymore. Uh, it's exactly the same, the same demo, and right now you're looking at the default behavior where you know nothing strange happens. So I've modified a bit this application, and at the top, I can enable or disable the HTTP header on the fly. Okay, this is just a simple example. In your case, maybe you could have a networking proxy or some other way to, let's say, decide that French users will have the header enabled and non-French users will not have the header enabled. Uh, maybe even your application has somewhere a settings where the users themselves can decide and say, yes, show me bleeding edge stuff, I want to test the latest versions and I don't care about the risk. So this is something that you can set uh, per user. So the magic moment is that right now, you know, nothing is uh, happening, but if I go and set this and say, oh, I want bleeding edge stuff, and I hit apply, everything goes to the new version. So right now I'm a user where all my requests have this uh, header, so all my requests go to the new version, and I can easily test this if I open another browser simulating, uh, let's say, a second user. And I also send them to this exact same URL, so not a different URL. And this user is not affected. So now I have achieved what I wanted. I have settings per user. Okay, each user can see different things according to uh, their selection instead of just, you know, having specific uh, groups. So, have I improved things? Uh, yes, I still have full control of the blast radius. I can control who looks at the canary and who doesn't. Now my clients can make a choice if they want. I don't need to set up anything in advance. They can choose if they want to see the new version or not, and they can even change this on the fly while the canary um, is running. The problem is that here, and, uh, apart you know, from the support, you need to check if your traffic provider supports this. Maybe you also need to do some source code changes. So in my simple example, I changed the source code you know, to add this small box at the top um, where I can select the header. Maybe this is something that you can do as well. So it's a bit more complex than simply uh, setting different routes as we have seen in the previous example. But everything else you know is improved. So today we have seen that if you try to adopt Argo rollouts out of the box, yes, you get a nice way you know, for doing canaries and blue-green deployments. But usually for a real production deployment, you need some extra uh, capabilities. By default, the random percentage goes to requests, and you don't want to do that. Uh, also, by default, you, know, you cannot change things on the fly. So we have seen two ways. One was the static URL uh, routing, where we had three routes and we would select that these users would go to this stable uh, version, these users would go to the Canary version, and these users would go to the preview version. This is great, but it's something that you need to set it up in advance, so it's not very flexible. And then we have seen the smarter way with HTTP uh, headers, where not only you can make the change per user, but you can also change everything uh, on the fly. So whenever I talk about Argo rollouts, usually uh, people 
bring into the discussion feature flags because some of the things that you have seen are similar to feature flags. Like with feature flags, you can also you know, enable features according to different users. You can group your users and say this feature will be only available to France and that feature will not be available uh, outside of uh, France. And yes, feature flags you know, are a great thing. You can use them along with uh, Canaris and BlueGrid deployments, not no, one or the other. But my comment there is that all the solutions I've shown you are, uh, are set up once. You spend effort once, you set it up and that's it. Feature flags need constant maintenance, okay? I'm actually betting right now that if you're using feature flags, there is at least one feature flag in your code base, which at some point you know was important. Then everybody said, okay, let's switch everybody to the new version and the code is still there. You still have an if else statement that does something different and the else doesn't run anymore. So ideally you should spend some time you know, to go and clean up your feature flags in order to simplify your life. But as you add more feature flags, this needs uh, constant maintenance. So I'm saying this because people always come and ask me about this comparison table, like how do you compare all these uh, possibilities? So here is the comparison table if you want to, to have it. Uh, but it's not really a comparison because you can do two of them at the same time or three of them at the same time. So I could have a scenario where I'm using feature flags and header-based routing. And for some users, I send them to slash table because I don't want them to uh, look at the canary at all. But you have like the capability to see you know, what you can do according to your uh, needs. And also in some of those, you need cooperation with the developers. So if you want to adopt feature flags, you need to talk with the developers because they need to modify the code in order to add feature flags. The first solution I've shown you, the, the static setup, maybe it's limited, but it's something you can quickly you know, set up on your own just with Argo rollouts and a traffic manager and without any other uh, user, um, uh, sorry, developer involvement. So uh, it, it, apart from the developers, you can also see the third row, the adoption effort, where I'm explaining why I believe uh, feature flags are high, because it's something that you all not only need initial investment, but then as you know, you add more feature flags, you also need to update them, and you also need to clean them up uh, and do whatever you want. So feel free to choose you know, whichever method works for you, but it's possible to use two of them or three of them at the same time. And that's it. Thank you very much. We have enough time for questions. There are two microphones between the rows. No questions. Yes. It's working, maybe, no? Hello? Uh, yeah, all right, sorry. Um, if you, if you like, set up the canary, are there situations you've experienced where not enough people use the canary service to like satisfy whatever you're measuring? Uh, again, a bit, uh, come closer to the microphone. I didn't hear uh, that. Can you hear that? All right. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, if you've set up a canary and not enough people are using the new canary endpoint, like for some reason your users are all asleep at some point, um, is there other mechanisms for you to set up kind of like drive synthetic traffic to meet whatever metrics you're measuring? Yes, so one feature I didn't talk about because it wasn't for this presentation is that you can set up uh, analysis uh, templates with Argo rollouts and you can uh, either look at metric providers there or run custom tests. So the proper way to use Argo rollouts is while the canary is running, you can also start a custom test that either creates real traffic or simulated traffic and it sends to the canary. And then you start another analysis that checks the metrics while this simulated traffic is running. So you can do it with real users, but you can also do it with fake users or with a combination uh, of two. But yes, ideally while the canary is running, you want to test the, uh, the canary. One feature that is coming in the gateway um, API and the plugin, which already, as I said, exists for Istio, is where you can uh, mirror traffic. So you can have you know, your real traffic go to the production system, and then you mirror the traffic and you send it to a completely separate system, and then you test whatever you want to test without affecting uh, production at all. Yes. Hello, my name is John, fellow traffic routing enthusiast. 
could you expand on the pros and cons of using a cookie header to do traffic versus an X dash header? Uh, I haven't checked this topic. I can research it. I don't think there is a real uh, advantage. Usually cookies, I think, are not supported e everywhere in the you know networking stack, while I think headers are more universal. They are a well-known solution, and you can find, let's say, really old traditional proxies, and they support headers. The classic problem you have is you start a cookie or a header somewhere in the beginning of a stack, and then somewhere in the middle, somebody either cuts it, discards it, or changes this. So I believe headers are a bit more bulletproof. But I might be wrong. Yeah, most, most cookies are just passed to the cookie dad, cookie colon header. And your login session would be dependent on a cookie header as well. OK, but two cookies uh, always require like uh, a browser-based application. Can I have yes. a backend application? Yes, and a browser-based application. So this works with backend applications as well. Remember in the beginning I said the auth service itself doesn't have a web service at all, the one I'm starting the canary. Yes. Hi. In this presentation, you mainly talked about how to set it up so traffic routes to multiple canaries or the main stable one. But what flow do you suggest when you have now decided that everyone should be moved to this 2.0 version? Um, I guess you can manually go in and run the Argo CD rollout, uh, whatever command for rolling it out. What, what is the flow you're suggesting for this kind of? So that was another presentation from yesterday. The suggestion is to have Argo rollouts automatically promoted for everything. So everything, all the demos you have seen are while the canary is running. The assumption is that at some point Argo rollouts makes a decision and says, yes, the new version is great. So it promotes on its own the canary to 100% of the traffic for everybody, and then it doesn't really matter where you are. Maybe this was a, a thing to improve in the demo. Before the canary starts, this slash table slash preview slash a canary, they show the exact same thing, version one, and after you finish the canary, again, they show the exact same thing, they show version 2.0. And to follow up on that, so let's say that now, some, some, since the user can decide if they want to have that header sometimes, if they want the canary, that was one of the examples, right? Let's say now you have decided to roll out to this new canary version for everyone, but the user is still on the canary. So the next time you want to use do a new canary, do they have to say canary 2? Or that, like, I guess that you have to communicate to the user to go back to the stable one because you're about to make a new canary. Does it make sense? Uh, if you're talking about this uh, you know, nice selection I have, there is a big discussion whether you want to expose it to the user or not. So sure. if you want your users to be smart, yes, you can expose it to them. But if you don't want them to, to do this, uh, I've actually had some companies where I proposed this method and they said, no business who is never going to you know, approve users selecting their risk. We will make the selection for them and they are go not going to know anything at all. So it depends on your use case. All right. Thank you. Yes, probably last question. <laughs> yes, um, so I'm just looking at the slides um, that you're showing the new syntax. Um, I know that the um, set header route is the way to tell whether the traffic go to canary versus stable. Um, and then the new syntax for the HTTP route, HTTP route is that the one? How, how does it decide which sets of user it's going to stable versus which set of user going to canary? So uh, they're following, not based on requests. Wait, wait, wait. Which, which example are you talking about? The first one or the second one? The dynamic one. OK, so here I have the dynamic. This is a standard um, rollout. The only thing new here is that I'm saying I'm going to use uh, special routes, mm -hmm. so it's not a standard canary uh, anymore. I'm using the gateway API plugin, mm -hmm. because this is only supported by the API plugin. Mm -hmm. um, then I'm saying start the canary, and you will send 20% of the traffic to new users. Mm -hmm. But if there is a HTTP header, which is called X canary, and it's called yes, then those users will always be selected for this 25% and they will go um, to the new version. Whether this header is present or not, in my example, you know, it was super simple because I had the, the UI, but you need to decide in your, in your application if this is something per user or not. Maybe you don't want to use it to be per user and you want it to be per region. So you decide that everybody, you know, in France has this 
header. So it can be 10 users, 100 users, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we have to choose the user and then we have to apply that header to that group of users. Yes, it's uh, all the requests, um, let's see also maybe in the browser. So here, you can see the request, they run every three seconds and all the requests, apart from the original one, they have this uh, header at the end, X canary yes. So it, it's running you know, all the time for every request. Thank you. And that's it, thank you very much.